Hey parents, it's Mr. Jim here. This back to school season, give your kids the tools they need to have fun while they learn with Osmo. Osmo's reading adventure, Learn to Read Game is an interactive tool for kids five to seven that help them practice and develop reading fundamentals. Because it's never too early to fall in love with reading. Visit playosmo.com to check out the reading adventure new reader kit today. That's playosmo.com. Osmo, learning well played. Hey friends, it's Mr. Jim and welcome back to Kid Short Stories. Have you heard about our book that is coming out this fall? Yes, oh my goodness, I cannot wait for you to be able to hold this hardcover book in your hands and there's some really awesome rewards as well for this pre-ordering that begins in just a few weeks. So have your parents click on the link for Mr. Jim Books down in the show notes below so that we know how many books to order in our first run of printing. Are you guys ready for today's story? Me too. Let's go. It was a rainy day outside as Luca was playing with some of his toys. He had built an amazing castle and whole world using some blocks, action figures, and cars. It was amazing. This world that he built was something that he had worked on for a very long time. It's kind of like he was never done actually building it. Have you ever worked on something like that before? Where every day you can add to it to make it a little bigger or a little more exciting or some more details yeah the details are the parts that make things extra special do you know what details means yeah it's all the little things so if you're making a castle you might first build the structure of the castle but then to make it a little more special maybe you add a moat around the castle or a drawbridge those things are the details of what makes the castle or whatever you're building, super duper cool. Hey, Luca, shouted one of his parents. We're going to be leaving at 1150, so make sure that you're ready before then, okay? Okay, shouted Luca. He turned around to look at his clock to see what time it was, how much more time he could work on his world, but it was not showing anything. Oh, man, I think my clock is out of batteries. Luca raced over to the battery drawer, pulled it out, and searched for double A's. Hmm, nothing in here, no, no double A's here, said Luca. Um, maybe the closet has some. He ran over to the closet and checked. No batteries there either. How in the world was he going to be ready to leave the house at 11.50 if he didn't know what time it was? What if, like, right now it was 11.48 and he only had two minutes left? Or what if there was a whole hour? Hmm, Luca had to find some batteries. He decided it might be a good idea to grab some of his spy gear to help him look for clues of batteries. As he journeyed around his entire house, he finally found one double A battery. But do you remember how many he needed? Two He needs two AA batteries. One is not enough. He grabbed a flashlight and turned it on and started to look in some places that maybe a battery might have rolled into or under. Not in his closet, not under his bed. But wait, underneath the couch was one more battery. He finally had two AA batteries. He raced up to his clock and carefully put them in the right places in the clock pressed the on button, and as it turned on, it blinked. Ah! Luca shouted he had never seen his clock do that before. Why, hello there. Uh, can I help you? Said his clock. Holy smokes, how did you come alive? Oh, well, I've always been alive. I've just never had much to say, but now that you're staring right at my face, I say hello. Oh, uh, hi, m- my name's Luca. What's your name? Why, hello, Luca. My name is Clockazoo. Did you say Clockazoo? Oh, that's a fun name. Hi, Clockazoo. 
So, uh, again, do you, do you know what time it is? That's, that's why I, uh, that's what I need help with right now, asked Luca. Oh, dear, I, I do not know the time. What time is it? Oh, no. What kind of clock doesn't know the time? <laughs> clock Azoo started to cry because he didn't know what time it was. And I think that's the clock's only job. So I think Luca is going to need to give him some help. Oh, please do not cry, said Luca. I will help you. Don't worry. We will figure out the time together. Um, what about the sun? Doesn't the sun help us tell time? Asked Luca. <laughs> uh, I think you're right, but I do not know how to do that. Luca put his hand underneath his chin as he started to think very hard. Can you think of a way of of how, if, if you turned on a clock for the very first time, how would you know, know what time it is to program that clock to have the right time? Hmm. Luca was thinking very, very hard. He didn't know if he was running out of time before his family was leaving. Or if there was plenty of time. It's quite the situation to be in. Wait a second. I just remembered something, said Luca. What? Is it bad or is it good? Asked Clockazoo. Oh, no, no, no. It's very, very good. Don't you worry. Just wait right here. I'll be right back. Oh, don't worry. I won't move. I, I don't have any legs. I'll wait right here. Luca raced off to go find another clock. Somewhere else in his house, there would be another clock. Maybe on the microwave or maybe hanging on the wall somewhere. But there would surely be another place where that time would show. All right, where is the clock? Where is the clock? I don't know if I'm running out of time or have plenty left. Uh, oh, there's one. It says 1148. 1148. Okay. He raced back over to where his clock azoo was sitting. What did you tell? Did you find out what time it was? Yes, yes. It was a uh, it was a uh, 1148. How do I uh, how do I change the the buttons? Hit the buttons right here. The clock had these buttons on the top of it, and that would help change the time on it to set it to the right time. Okay, I just have a couple more buttons i gotta get the get the time all the way to wait a second what was what was the time i can't remember 11 it was uh one one what were the other numbers uh, i don't remember i don't have a good memory ah uh, ah uh, uh, was it uh one one four something yes it was uh it was one one four eight yes hurry tap 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 he tapped on the buttons until the clock finally showed 11.48. You've done it, lad. It's, oh, it feels so much better to have the right time on my face. Uh, didn't you say you had to go somewhere? Luca then remembered. Holy smokes, yeah. You're right, I had to get ready to leave. Uh, it was like 11.50, I think. How many more minutes until then? Luca looked back at the clock, and it now read 11.49. Holy smokes! There's only one more minute left! Clockazoo, I gotta go get my shoes on, because I gotta go. But, uh, thanks for telling me the time. Bye! Oh, those kids and their things they're always running to. I'm just glad to be back to normal. The end. Great job. You listened all the way to the end. All right, friends, I want to make sure that you don't miss out on this book that is coming out very soon. We need to know how many are we need to order in this first run of printing for Mr. Jim's book called The Day We Saved the Light Bulb. It's going to be an amazing adventure that you don't want to miss out on. And so have your parents look down on the show notes below. Click on that Mr. Jim Books link so that you can let us know that you want one of those books. And now it's time to celebrate a birthday. 
birthday. Drum roll, please. Happy birthday, Elijah, who's turning six years old. He loves camping. His favorite food is sushi. <gasps> like me. I love sushi so much. And he loves listening to Mr. Jim on any car ride. Oh, that is awesome, Elijah. I'm so glad we got to celebrate your amazing day on the show. Happy birthday, Elijah. I hope it's the best one ever. Well, friends, I hope you all have a super duper day. And I will see you on our next adventure. Bye.